Hello, Gary Rogers here. Welcome to the Spiritual Heritage Channel, where I endeavour to share some stories to encourage you in your Christian faith. Today I'd like to talk about a favourite evangelist of mine, Mary or Molly Eves. Molly was born in Bundaberg in 1881. Bundaberg's a town in Queensland, Australia. After her conversion, the Molly tried to share the gospel with the South Sea Islander workers there. They were indentured workers from places like Vanuatu and the Solomon Islands. She, however, felt powerless and also she was very hungry for God. One day she said to one of her co-workers, I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm just so hungry. I don't know what to do. And the co-worker said, well, I can't help you, but there's a man of God in town at the moment who has just had an experience and he may be able to help you. So Mary walked three miles to see this man and knocked on the door and he said to her, I can't see you tonight, it was a Saturday night, but come tomorrow morning before church and I'll see you. So Mary walked all the way home, another three miles. That night she couldn't sleep and she prayed all night. She walked back again the next morning and the man of God asked her, well, what do you want? And she said, I want more of Jesus. And he said, well, haven't you already got Jesus? And he said to her, you need the Holy Spirit or the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And so he laid hands on her and he said, receive the Holy Ghost, receive the Holy Ghost, receive, forehead finished saying, receive the Holy Ghost for the third time. Molly was baptised in the Holy Spirit and she reacted by getting up and dancing. It was a posh house and the man of God was afraid that she might damage something so he opened the door and Molly went and danced in the street and told everyone, I've received the Holy Spirit and a lot of people came to the meeting that night as a result of that. People were talking about that years later when she returned. Well, Mary began to work among the Aborigine people after the repatriation of the South Sea Island workers. And she worked in Sydney. And she, however, got quite ill. And she had to go to a cooler climate and went to Tasmania for about a year. She never really got back into the work with the Aborigine. One day, however, she met up with a woman by the name of Rachel Nalda, who was travelling around Australia talking about the great social reformer Pandita Ramumbai. Pandita Ramumbai rescued child brides and had an orphanage which grew to 3,000 children. And Molly was fascinated by this. Pandita Ramumbai was a very smart lady. She could speak seven languages and she translated the Bible into the Marathi language. But she wanted revival. She wanted the Holy Spirit in her orphanage and sought God for it. And revival came in the early 1900s. Molly worked there for two years. But because the war was on, she then began to work with the YMCA and travelled all around India, ministering to soldiers. She returned to Australia in 1920 and then also came to New Zealand. She came to my home city of Christchurch where she spoke at the Sydenham Gospel Mission. The elders there included a couple by the name of Kalinj and Alan England. And Molly shared about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. 
they accepted that message and they received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And the church then examined to see, examined the Bible to see if this was a valid experience. They examined the Bible and they determined it was valid and they decided to embrace it across the whole church. And that church became Pentecostal. This was three months before Smith's Wigglesworth came to New Zealand and spoke at the Sydney Gospel Mission. Molly then returned to Australia and then immigrated to the USA where she settled in Oakland, California and she lived in the Home of Peace which was a home for missionaries that was set up by a early healing evangelist by the name of Carrie Judd Montgomery. For several years Molly was based there as an evangelist. Molly travelled all over USA and held evangelization crusades and she even planted her own church which grew to 800 people. One day there was an evangelist by the name of Adolfo Clarence Valdez. He was sitting at his home in Modesto, California, and he was reading the Word of God, the Bible. And he was reading Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And he was reading about the still waters, and it was so peaceful until there was a loud knock at the door. He opened the door, and there he saw a wild-eyed woman, and with a shrill voice, she raised her arms and said to him, The Lord says, you're going to Australia. Wow, he never met this woman in his life. And he invited her in and found out that her name was Molly Ears. And he was thinking, I've been thinking about going to Australia, but I, I haven't got any money. And just then Molly said, the Lord says you're going soon. And that night he couldn't sleep. And he had a vision, an open-eyed vision. And he saw the map of the Pacific Ocean and New Zealand and Australia. And he saw a steamship go down through the Pacific to New Zealand and Australia. And he even saw the name of the ship and it was the SS Monganui. A short time later, someone gave him a large sum of money, enough to take him and his wife and his mother to Australia. And he booked on the first ship he could book on, and the name of it, as you can guess, was the SS Monganui. Now, he was expecting to sort of go through New Zealand, but when he arrived in Wellington, which is the capital of New Zealand, there was a band playing on the wharf. There were taxis waiting, and they took him to a big banquet. And he said, My God, they think I'm a, a great preacher like D.L. Moody or Finney. And he said, I try not to panic. Well, God really used A.C. Valdez while he was in New Zealand. And at one meeting in the Wellington Town Hall, he heard, a, as he was preaching, he heard a loud cracking noise up in the balconies. And 500 people were baptised in the Holy Spirit and began speaking in tongues and languages they hadn't learned all at once. There were some Roman Catholic and Anglican priests at this meeting. It was very crowded up the front. But they edged themselves up the front and they managed to talk to A.C. Valdez and they, they said, oh, look, all these, um, all this, these fire, this tongues of fire on people's head, does, does this happen in all your meetings? And A.C. Valdez said wisely, yes, it does, but you can't always see it. Well, after New Zealand, A.C. Valdez went to Australia and he preached at the 
a small church in the suburb of Sunshine and a revival broke out and that revival was known as the Sunshine Revival and out of that grew the Pentecostal Church in Australia. Well, at one of those meetings there was a, a young man from the Melbourne Bible Institute. It, in fact, there were a group of young men who, from that Bible Institute, the principal was very wary of what was going on and warned them not to go. But they went anyway because they were hungry for God. Now this young man, his name was Len Jones. He was touched by God in one of those meetings and received this power from on high, this baptism in the Holy Spirit. Some years later, probably eight years later, he set up a worldwide missionary organization called World Outreach. Years later, Len Jones invited a man called Ray Jackson to set up a Bible school in Sydney, Australia. At that Bible school, there were several young men who were impacted and who ended up coming to New Zealand. One of those men was Peter Morrow, and Peter Morrow, God used him to set up the New Life Churches in New Zealand, and today that denomination has 70 churches in it. So the thing I like about Molly Ears, well firstly, the way God used her, she was so hungry for God, she would do anything for God, left no stone unturned. The second thing, I very much like the way she she stepped out with that prophecy to A.C. Valdez. That had a major impact on Australia and New Zealand. I imagine that when she went to the home of this man who she'd never met before, her needs would have been knocking. Now maybe, maybe God has a word that he wants to speak through you and you, you, you don't want to say it. You, it could be embarrassing or, you know, maybe you don't know the person, but you really feel that God has a word for that person. Well, maybe it's time you stepped out of the boat, just like Molly is, and delivered that word. It could be world changing. So thank you for listening to the Spiritual Heritage Channel and I hope to be able to share more stories like this. Thank you.